Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway. Today I want to find out what happens if you take a double O scale model and literally shrink it down to N scale. <music> So this video is exactly as I described it before the intro. I want to take a double O scale model and scale it down to N scale. But what I haven't mentioned yet is that you can't do that. It doesn't work. Dave from Hattons, he's, a, he's in charge of their exclusive stuff. He once explained to me why you can't do this because a model in any scale is designed for that scale. So the fine detailing and the small separately fitted parts, those are all designed to be a compromise between realism, looking good, but also being strong enough and practical enough to actually fit. If you scale those small details down by like half, as we're doing here from double O to N scale, then those parts become twice as size, they become twice as fragile and so much more difficult to fit. And similarly, by the way, scaling up has the uh, sort of opposite problem. Um, things become much coarser and less realistic if you scale them up. So it's really difficult to just scale models down and have them work. So to get over that problem, I've decided I'm going to try and scale this model. This is one of my 3D printed vans and this doesn't really have any fine details on it or anything so I'm hoping that most of this stuff can be scaled down but that is far from problem solved because even this van of mine is designed to be printed in double O scale. I know the specific limitations of the 3D printers I use and so the, the walls of the van, those are all designed with the nozzle size, the nozzle diameter of the 3D printers in mind. The small details, even the, the moulded details, moulded as, as it were, even those are designed with the nozzle size in mind. I don't think I can scale this down to almost half size and still have all of the details come out properly. And of course, the proper way to do this would be to redesign this model and uh, you know compromise the level of detail on it so that it will print at N scale. But that is not what's happening today. Today, I want to find out what happens if I literally take this model, the couplings and everything, and just scale it down. I want to see if it works. So let's try it. Okay, so here it is. Here is the van body loaded up into SketchUp and I'm going to do literally nothing to this except just scale it down. Now, you shouldn't do this, right? Every part of this van has been designed. I'm going to scale it to 0 0.51 scale. Has been designed for double O scale and for the real scale of the 3D printer that I use. So the wall thickness, the size of the detailing, it's all been designed for the 3D printer that I use. I really don't know what's going to happen. I think it's probably just going to go wrong. But there we go. That is the body dealt with. Okay, so next up, I've got the chassis, and this is going to cause, I think this is going to be more of a problem, if you ask me, because all of these details on the axle boxes and the bearings and such, this is all pretty fine as it is. So scaling this down to around half scale, that could be interesting. We've also got the NEM couplings. I'm not going to change the NEM pockets at all. I'm just going to, again, these are going to scale down. So I will have to try and create some half scale NEM couplings. Obviously, real N scale uses um, its own sort of coupling, but this one's not going to. I'm literally just going to scale this down in exactly the same way. And you can see the difference in scale here, by the way. If I undo that, that's the original size. That's the new size. <laughs> oh, this is going to be ridiculous. But then it, there we go, that's it. I'm not doing any more to the chassis. The one thing that is a bit complicated is wheels, because obviously I can't just use the old wheels, the old metal wheels, because they're double O scale. So I'm going to have to resort to using my own sort of test wheels that I designed for 3D printing. First of all, the axle is going to have to go completely. I am going to scale the wheels down. I'm going to scale those down again by the same degree as everything else. Again, are these going to print? I don't know. Pretty sure these cones on the top, pretty sure they're not going to print. So I'm going to literally just chop those off the model. Oh, if I can. And also the hole in the bottom is going to go as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try, <laughs> try, I'm going to try and just put a hole into these wheels so that I can put a one millimeter rod through the wheels. The downside to that will be that there won't be a point on the end of each rod uh, to reduce the friction, but the upside means that I can use a rigid rod which will go through both wheels 
and hopefully produce an axle that is secure and it won't take me ages to sort of get the thing to actually work and be level and such. So I need to find the centre of this wheel, which is a bit annoying to do in SketchUp, but there it is. And the rods I'm going to be using are exactly one millimetre in diameter, but we need the radius in SketchUp, so I will have to use uh, 0 0.5 millimetre, but I also want to leave a little bit of clearance just so that they're not too hard to get on. So I'm going to put 0 0.6 in. Oh dear, there we go, that's all right. I'm going to put 0 0.6 in, that's going to be the size of the rod, and then that hole can go right through the centre of the wheel. And I'll worry about gauge and everything else later on. So there we go, we've got wheels. And I'm not going to be bothering with separate brake rigging or anything for these because I don't need that in order to find out whether this is going to work. But one thing that I think would be nice to try would be the couplings, like I say. So let's scale these down. Again, I think already in double O scale, these couplings are really pushing the limits of what an FDM 3D printer could do. I think, uh, you know, a resin printer could do this very easily, but I think surely this is going to be too tiny to use. I mean, how thick is this leg? This leg is 0.43 millimeters thick, so that is going to be like one pass of the print head, of the, uh, of the nozzle, of the 3D printer. Yeah, I, I can't see it working. I really can't. How's the thickness of the pivot? Yeah, again, not a very thick piece. So we're just going to have to wait and see. We've now got all of the pieces I need scaled down, so I'm going to slice them. I'm going to get them ready, prepare them for the 3D printers. And I'm going to do nothing else but just upload the files to the printers and see what they make of them. This is going to be really interesting, I think. Let's try it. So we're going to start off with the body then. And for the body, I'm going to print it on my iMate S printer because this is the one I use for all of my bodies and it tends to do the best job of bodies, I find. So let's hit the button. Here we go. And let's see what happens. Now in the file slicing software, that's where you prepare the model to be printed, it looked really good. I have to say, it looked absolutely fine. One or two very minor glitches and um, errors in the detailing and such, but it looked as though it would actually print. So I'm really interested to see how this goes. There is also another trick up my sleeve uh, in getting the most out of these 3D printers. And that is that when I print it at double O scale, I don't use the minimum layer height of these 3D printers because it takes too long. The layer height is the distance between each layer, effectively, of the model. And if you reduce that layer height in the Z-axis, so that's vertically up and down, you can actually get more detail. So I've done that. I usually print at 0.18 millimeters uh, layer height, but this time I'm gonna be printing at 0.08 millimeters. So at least in the z-axis, we should be able to scale the level of detail and get the same fidelity. What I haven't done though is changed the size of the nozzle. So, you know, on the sort of XY plane, we're not going to be able to scale the detail. Now, interestingly, this 3D printer did come with, was it a 0.2 millimeter nozzle? So I literally could try that. <laughs> it's lazy of me not to because I've never tried that nozzle and there are all kinds of problems with printing at tiny nozzle diameters. Uh, they get clogged and all that stuff. I haven't even bothered to try it, but I could. Maybe that is something I could try later down the line. And then you literally could scale down uh, double O gauge models to N scale and have the printers attempt to do exactly the same thing, but at half scale. But that's not today. Anyway, off it goes. Let's see what this machine makes of it. Okay, I think she's off. And funnily enough, it's actually going to take longer to print the end scale version of this than it is the 001. The 001 takes just less than an hour, I think, or maybe it is an hour. Maybe I'm wrong about that, actually. But either way, this isn't far off from that. This is coming in at one hour 22, that's the estimate. It's usually a little bit less than that, though. So we'll see how this gets on. I will come back before that hour is up to see sort of how it is halfway through. But obviously uh, we can't see very much at the moment so we'll move on to one of my other machines and see if we can't make a start on the chassis all right so i'm going to be printing the chassis again on my usual chassis printing machine this is the flash forge adventurer 3. again the chassis looked okay it looked absolutely fine in the slicing software 
However, I did notice that there were some seriously thin parts of it. Uh, as expected, the axle boxes and the springs that hold up the axle boxes, they were absolutely tiny, thin things. There's gonna be almost no structural integrity there. Uh, so that is a classic example of why you can't scale down to N scale from double O, but it doesn't mean you can't try. That's the thing, you can't do it, but you can try. So let's see what happens here. All right, it's gonna have a go. So I have got green filament in here, unfortunately, so it is going to produce a green chassis, which is unfortunate, but obviously this is just a test. And we have got some excess material poking out, so hopefully that will ruin my test. Might do a little. I think I might have been able to get it out of the way there. <laughs> but there we go, the chassis has begun. So now we're going to move on and take a look at the accessories. So that's the wheels and the couplings. Unfortunately, I do have a third 3D printer so that we can get onto that straight away and produce every part of this wagon simultaneously, which is pretty cool. So let's take a look. So for accessories and such, I always use this Mingda Magician X because it's got the glass bed and it seems to do a better job at the tiny, tiny size. So let's get started printing the couplings. The couplings actually seemed, again, to slice absolutely perfectly. It looks as though every part of them is going to actually print, but again, looking good on a computer screen isn't the same as looking good and actually working physically. So again, how is this gonna go? Let's find out. The other reason I like to use this is that you can nudge the Z height up and down during a print, which is really handy for getting these uh, sort of the perfect height from the bed. Otherwise, if you don't, things don't stick. So I'm going to nudge this down, usually 0 0.08 or maybe even 0 0.1 down is about right for this machine at the moment. So <laughs> it's, doing, it's running rings around the part first, it's printing a skirt. That's because it takes a while for the filament to get to the nozzle. So it will do that, I think about eight times just to make sure the filament's there and then it will try printing the coupling. And this won't take long, I think two minutes was the ETA on this. So we should have this part finished first. Now I am, I'm not crazy, well I am crazy, but I'm not crazy enough to think that this will print and work at the end of the day, but I am hoping that the parts will actually print and that they will look like the parts they're supposed to be and that maybe the coupling itself will fit into a NEM pocket, uh, that would be nice. Um, but whether these could actually function as couplings, I highly doubt. I mean, there is a reason why N-Gage doesn't use couplings that look like this. Can, can you see it? You can just about see the parts. This is absolutely incredible. Worth doing just for this, just for the tiny NEM. There we are, that's it, literally. Uh, it was done it, did it in four minutes. And that includes all the warm-up time as well. So, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous. Would you look at those? That is absolutely awesome. How does this machine do it? I really don't know. And while the machine is still hot, let's do the wheels as well. And we'll come back when these wheels have printed and we'll see whether they actually look round and whether they're going to be usable. For now though, I want to take a closer look at those couplings and see if the hook will actually fit onto the coupling itself. <laughs> First though, quick update on the body. I can see some of the bodywork coming to life. It's done the first few millimeters, I would say, and so far it seems to be working. So that's very exciting. We'll check back in with that a little bit later on. The chassis is also definitely taking shape. Doesn't look quite as good though. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's starting to warp, but this machine is starting to have real trouble with the smaller details. All right, so it would be really awesome if these just fitted together, but I'm gonna play the pessimist here and say I don't think they're going to because all of the tolerances and everything, they've all been cut in half. So all of the fits have been cut in half. Yeah, it's just not gonna happen, is it? But I'm gonna try. Let's see here. I mean, oh my word. It, it's worked. I mean, the hook is not loose. But it, it is hinging up and down. That is incredible. Can you believe that? Let me get a full size one just to show you how ridiculously tiny this thing is. That is ridiculous. 
Okay, here is an actual size part, and these are not big things. And there is the half scale one next to it. This video was worth doing just for that. <laughs> because that is ridiculous. I don't know if it will fit onto the chassis, because the chassis looks a mess. But that is amazing. That is going on display somewhere. An N scale tension lock coupling. <laughs> that is awesome, dude. Okay, here are the wheels. Core. I mean, they essentially, they look all present and correct, don't they? More or less. Let's see if we can get these off the base. Oh, this is not going to be easy. All right, it's off. So, yeah, I mean, they're stuck together. But I think they could work. So I'm going to have to make myself a shaft. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, see if we can mount these onto a shaft and then we might have working wheels okay <laughs> there we go tiny wheels on tiny axles and some couplings pay no attention to the bent axle there uh, <laughs> that was unavoidable <laughs> but it, it should still prove the concept right all right I've just caught the end of the chassis and it looks like all my fears have not come to pass. Uh, it looks as though the axle boxes and the springs have at least printed. They are at least there. I, I don't know what sort of quality we're dealing with at the moment, but let's pull this build plate out and let's find out. So the chassis has warped a tiny little bit. I think it's this corner, but that's not that's nothing to do with the scale. That's just because I haven't tested this really I haven't refined it I think if I change the uh, the layer height I should be able to you know fix the warping there without any problems uh, so yeah as you can see it was printed too high off the build plate so that was avoidable but everything else seems to be there I mean the NEM coupling pockets seem to be there I could open those out a little bit with my file I think I will do that whether the axles will fit I have no idea at all I really don't know uh, I guess I'm just going to have to try and put them in and see what happens. Okay, so no, they don't seem to be quite long enough. But I could probably just sort of glue them in there as a proof of concept. I mean, I can't run this anyway because I don't have any end scale track. Maybe this one's a bit longer. All right, yeah, we can work with that one. That one's a touch longer. Okay, so we've got wheels in, just sort of. Now let's try putting one of these couplings in. This is the one with the hook on it. Yeah. There we go. Nem coupling fitted. <laughs> let's put the other one in on the other side. Yeah, that one's an even easier fit. Oops, I've popped the wheels out. But there we go. If I put some glue on those wheels, we should have a chassis that looks right at least. Oh, it's just the body left and we can't see it. It's out of sight. We're at about 95%. There are a couple of layers still to go. I have caught a glimpse of this thing, folks. And I've got to say, I'm pretty excited. But we haven't got it off the machine yet. We haven't had a close look. Any second now, this machine is going to finish it and then we can do so. Okay, it's descending. And there's your first look at it. I mean, even from back here, it's, it looks pretty darn good. I mean, the Mingda Magician X did a fantastic job today. But I think this machine has just stolen the show with that. Right. Let's get it out. I'm going to glue it onto the chassis. And then I will show you what the results were. Let me pull that out of here. Okay, folks. So here is the double O gauge version of the van we've been working on today. And here is the N-Gage version of the exact same van. I say N-Gage version, this is not an N-Gage model of the double O-Gage model. This is the double O-Gage model that has been scaled down to N-Gage. There is a difference there. And on the whole, this thing is amazing. I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed by all of my 3D printers today. I did not think that these X-shaped bracings would ever come out right so that you could see them. 
but they are, they're there, and it looks wonderful. In fact, the model looks a lot better, I think, in N-Gage from back here than it does in double O. It's just really, really nicely finessed. Uh, let's show you the back. I mean, look at that. Absolutely crazy level of detail on the back. Uh, the chassis isn't quite as good, but look, there are still axle boxes nicely produced. They look okay. They really do look okay. And of course, the cherry on the top is the NEM coupling that uh, sort of works. I mean, it does pivot, which is astonishing. So, I mean, yeah, FDM 3D printing is viable in N-Gage. It's difficult. I mean, the wheels are a no-go. You would need to use proper wheels. And I would suggest designing models from scratch for Engage. I wouldn't recommend scaling stuff down because as good as this is, you could get much better results, I think, if you intentionally design something for Engage. But for a little silly experiment and for a video which I opened by saying this won't work, <laughs> I'm very, very mightily impressed. So there we go. Experiment a success. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Have you ever tried to do anything in N-Gage with a, a standard cheap FDM 3D printer? Did you think that this was possible? Did you expect to see this result? I don't know. That's pretty shocking to me. But thank you for watching, folks. I will see you very, very soon for some more videos. All right. Cheers, everybody.